Welcome back. So how would you feel about swapping the steak in your steak and eggs for jackfruit or a turkey sandwich made of soy? Food research firm Data Essentials says the number of menus offering plant-based items has increased more than 250% in the last four years. Jared Hill shows us how plant-based substitutes could soon be coming to a deli near you. It's the typical breakfast rush at a typical New York City bodega. But look a little closer at what the cooks are serving. Not so typical after all. Our bacon's made of kelp. Uh, burgers are made of jackfruit and pea protein. Neil Zacharias is the brains behind Plantega. That's plant bodega if you didn't catch it. The company supplies over 60 New York City bodegas with ingredients and training to make vegan versions of deli staples, expanding access. To offer people who are already coming to bodegas to buy the existing bacon, egg and cheese and substitute that for something that is healthier. Plantega's growth behind deli counters in New York City comes as research shows an increase in interest in plant-based options nationwide. I try to eat more plant-based. I just feel like it's healthier, it's clean. Health is the driving factor. We're getting a lot more fiber that's going to support our gut and decrease the risk of chronic diseases like the cancers, heart disease risk. Registered dietitian Yasi Ansari recommends pressure. focusing on less processed foods like beans or tofu when cutting animal products. And watch out for sodium and sugars, sometimes added to boost the taste. Keep it simple. Make sure that there's not a long list of ingredients of things that you can't necessarily pronounce. While experts say cooking at home is ideal, they understand sometimes people have to grab a bite on the go. I like the chicken, the fish, there's just so many flavors. Plantega hopes making these options more available will encourage new customers to give plant-based foods a try. One order at a time. Jared Hill. CBS News, New York. Scientists in Switzerland and Italy have developed a technology that can help restore amputees' sense of touch. Called mini-touch, electric sensors are fitted to an existing prosthetic. And those sensors transmit thermal information that enables a person to distinguish different temperatures. There is the functional part of knowing if something is hot or cold or detection of different materials. For example, if I, I place my finger on a piece of metal or plastic, I will recognize it through its thermal properties than modern their tactile ones. Dr. Soliman Shoker is an engineer at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. He says patients want more from prosthetics than simple mechanics. The possibility of touching somebody else's hand and feeling the warmth when they were touching uh, the, the hand of somebody, of, of a loved one. That seemed to be even more important, although not maybe directly functional, but much more important from a social point of view. And that's, we could also show it with our prototype. We could show that with eyes closed, they could detect if they were touching a fake hand versus a real hand, and that they could really have this more human-like touch when they were in contact with somebody. The study showed the sensation still felt natural more than a year later. And now to another one of the five senses, smell. Using scents to drum up memories may help treat depression. A team at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine had participants with depression smell common items like coffee grounds, oranges, and even Vicks vapor rub. The smells triggered more vivid memories than word cues, and participants were more likely to remember positive memories without prompting. The early research could eventually be used for treatment. On Valentine's Day last year, a Minnesota family had to rush their newborn to an emergency room because of a heart problem. Thanks to an organ donor, this year the parents celebrated the holiday together with their baby. Valentine's Day is also National Donor Day, and as Barrett Leone reports, this family shows how the gift of life is an act of love. <laughs> Little laughs and gurgles. We're just so grateful for everything and every day um, that has come. Means so much more. When there was a time Colin and Jesse Smith were praying for a cry. God bless the donors. One year ago, Valentine's Day, the Smiths, rushed two-week-old Maddie to the ER. It was there they learned she was an end-stage heart failure due to a rare genetic mitochondrial disorder. You don't know whether it's gonna be a month or a year. Kept alive by a heart pump, Maddie spent seven months in the cardiovascular intensive unit at Masonic Children's Hospital. Take it day by day and know that you can get to a, a really beautiful place on the other side if you can just mm -hmm. hold on. On that other side, Big day, September 7th. Oh, yeah. Was a heart. 
our expectation is that this will last her for a lifetime, that she'll do great with it, and she'll be able to do um, all the things that you would expect uh, uh, an, uh, a now toddler would be able to do. She didn't fight this hard. She didn't go through everything that she went through, not for her to live. A life Maddie will now live. It's, it's the greatest gift. To the fullest. Barrett Leone, CBS News, Minneapolis. That's this week's Eye on Health. I'm Bradley Blackburn. Thanks for joining us and be well.